It's important to be able to get down on paper exactly what you see. Now I saw this um, on another tutorial and I thought this was a really good example. So if you have this line, then it's important not to press too heavily and try to copy that line and let's say, oh, I messed up. And so it'd be a series of drawing something really darkly and erasing it, drawing and erasing, and that's not good. Sketching is basically putting down all of your ideas onto the paper at one time. So don't erase yet, but just like put them all down and it will look a little bit messy, but somewhere in that mess, you'll have something that looks like the original. And then just go through and erase the lines that you don't want, that are too far off to be a part of the actual figure. And it's alright to not really have the exact shape because the focus of drawing is a lot more, there's a lot more to it than just outlining or being able to outline, let's say, shape of a glue bottle. Because it's more important later on to be able to color and to shade because that is your icing on the cake. Because the world isn't just a series of lines. There's more to it. There's a lot more to it. Being able to accurately draw a side of a figure or the basic outline or general shape I think is very important because if there are any small flaws, even the smallest, that are different from the original, they will really show up when you add the shading and the color. So one of the things that we can do is we can take our pencil and we can compare certain proportions. For example, the size of this eye to this nose when we we're putting it on our paper. So this eye we can see from is from about the tip of our pencil to the edge where the paint shows. So we can pretty accurately get that down. And then our nose is from about the tip of our pencil right here to about right there. And from here works for a bunch of items, a bunch of different items. It can be about anything. You can take, let's say, a glue bottle, and from here you can eyeball it and use the same method. And there would be the height of how we see it. And it's important to draw exactly what we see instead of looking at our item, knowing what it is, and making up what it looks like on our paper. So let's say that there is a rectangle. Now before shading or coloring or painting or any definition of the light or colors or anything, it's just a rectangle. But when we add some shading to it, it can become a bunch of things, a variety of things, but that's how we define it. And now it becomes a rounder object, as you can see. It's just like a cylinder, where one part of it is shaded darker, and then it gets darker even still, again, because it's round. And so it reflects light differently at different positions. So our rectangle has now become this part of our cylinder. It could also just be a rectangular prism. So we'd see this side of it. And there's a big difference between a cylinder and a rectangular prism.
So for shading techniques, there are a variety of things that you can do. You can do the hatching, and this is basically just lines, and they all go in one direction. You see all these lines are basically parallel. There is also the cross hatching, and it's basically just the same as hatching, except you'll go over it a second time with lines that go in a different direction. There's also stippling, and this is just a series of dots, and it usually works a lot better with a pen or a marker, but it does create a really nice effect. And if you're going for something that's more of like a comic or a pop art type of thing, then you would make the dots a little more uniform, as if they were Bende dots. And of course, when you have your regular wooden pencil, you can just go through and shade sideways. And this generally works really well, and it creates a more even tone than the hatching or the cross hatching. Now one of the problems that most people will come by when they go through shading, which is beyond just the sketching, is that when they move their hand around, it'll get all smudgy, and there'll be smudges in places where they don't really want them to be. And it just creates a messier look. But one of the things that we can do is we can just, we can be really careful about where we place our hand. And it's good to sometimes lift your arm and just not let it touch the paper or work in certain ways, like work from the middle and go out. Or if you really need to put your hand down to, for some more uh, stability, you can always keep some paper around and put that over. Now the cross hatching and hatching don't exactly look as realistic with the, as these even tones from the sideways shading. So one of the things that you can also do is you can take a tissue paper and just kind of blend it like that. It'll also be a lot neater because even though basically you are smudging it, you're not smudging it in places where you don't want there to be smudges. So it's really controlled. And that works really well so that you could still keep your um, hand in position as if you were writing, which I usually like more because it gives me a little bit more control. And you can still get the same even tone.